In a Lonely Place was an excellent 1950 crime noir psychological thriller starring Humphrey Bogart and Gloria Graham. The acting, story, and production are fantastic. And this was just a great film that honestly I knew very little about and was really surprised by how much I enjoyed this film. Bogart here is back in his element as that world-weary, drinking, smoking character. And this time he's a screenplay writer in Hollywood. And the story is basically his character is Dixon Steele popular writer in Hollywood and it's just Humphrey Bogart at his finest I love seeing him in this type of character character so early in the film he's hanging out at this bar restaurant and he convinces Mildred Atkinson who's played by a young Martha Stewart not the one that does the home decorating uh, to come back to his place but mainly to read a script to him so she goes and starts reading these story ideas to him and clearly he's annoyed sends her home. However, the next day, Detective Brub Nikolai, who's played by Frank Lovejoy, shows up. I caught him recently in the film The Hitchhiker. And he was great in that. He's this tough, square-jawed character. But he tells Dix and his old friend that this is not a social call, and that there's been a murder investigation, that this Mildred Atkinson was found dead. So there's this criminal case going on. Dixon is brought in. He meets with Captain Lochner, who's played by Carl Benton, read as no-nonsense police captain there's a lot of questioning and they go over this detail about how Mildred was found murdered and what was his involvement and so on around this time Laurel Gray shows up was played by actress Gloria Graham she shows up for questioning as well both of them you know plead their innocence they're let go but the captain is still suspicious of Dixon because he seems to be pretty easy going about it all so Dixon walks home and he meets with Mel Lipman, who's played by Art Smith. He's this very likable character who plays his agent. He's a guy who seems really cool and he's generally concerned about Dixon. Gloria shows up and makes some small talk with Dixon and we the viewer know that eventually there's going to be a romance, of course. And Dixon is invited to dinner with Detective Brub and his wife. And while talking about the case, there's this really amazing scene where Dixon, in offering to help solve it, breaks into some role playing where he has Brub and his wife sort of interact as the murderer and the victim. And you gotta watch the scene, it's pretty cool. Watch the light on Bogart's eyes as he starts getting all animated describing the scenario of the killing. She wants to get rid of you. Squeeze harder. Harder. Brub is convinced that Dixon did actually offer some valid information on finding a lead, even though his wife, who's played here by Jean Marie Jeff Donnell, yeah, the actress's name is Jeff, which is kind of weird, she thinks the guy's crazy. But Brub is impressed by Dixon and his amateur detective senses. You know, he is a Hollywood writer, so he kind of knows this stuff. So Dixon heads back to meet with Laurel, and the two finally kiss. He then takes off with this newfound energy as this driven writer, and he's just going crazy writing his stories now. I guess a little bit of romance is all it takes to kind of get you back into writing. Even his agent Mel seems impressed with how much he's been doing. Charlie, his big semi-drunken friend, shows up. He's played by Robert. Warwick and helps poor Dixon to bed so he can get some rest because he's just been writing nonstop. And all the while he like brings him to bed, he's like quoting Shakespeare's sonnet. And later Dixon and Laurel are at a club and they're listening to singer Hayda Brooks. And wow, what a beautiful voice. I don't know much about her, but that was a neat scene. But Dixon realizes he's being tailed by some detectives and they leave. So a little bit later, there's this curious scene where Laurel is getting a massage by this large tough masseuse named Martha and Martha starts talking bad about Dixon and about his various past abuses and you know I'm watching the scene as this lady's giving a massage and I'm thinking for a minute that might be a weird twist if she was the killer but okay mini spoiler she isn't but watching that scene the thought crossed my mind but basically this plants the seed into Laurel's head that Maybe Dixon has a darker side, and indeed, things do get darker, as after hearing that 
Laurel didn't tell Dixon about going down to the police station again in order to answer more questions. Dixon really flies into a rage. He drives off in a hurry and when nearly in a car wreck, he gets out, starts beating up another dude and he's ready to bash his head in with a rock. I mean, whoa, bogey, take it down a notch. And at this point, Laurel, who was driving with him in the car at the time, is really starting to suspect Dixon might be a little bit loopy, or at the very least have some sort of behavioral disorder going on. But Bogey takes it down a notch, and they head back home. I was born when she kissed me. I died when she left me. I lived a few weeks while she loved me. I like it. But soon Dixon proposes to her, and although she accepts, you can tell it's kind of reluctant because she might think he's a monster with his behavior, but is he a killer? I mean, does he just have a short fuse? And did he actually kill the girl from earlier? Well, I'm going to end the review here. You got to check out this film for yourself because it is an interesting dark ending to this film. Not quite what I expected. And some closing thoughts. I like this film. Although, like I said, it takes a considerably more dark and abusive direction towards the end, in a way I wasn't expecting. And I have to say, you know, as an old softie, I would have liked to have seen some of the romance continue, but you got to see this one for yourself to see the direction that these characters go. And the film is still an edgy, suspenseful crime film, but it does really explore that psychology of behavioral disorders. And another thing to note, it's a typical scenario where I think Bogart was age 51 in this film and actress Gloria Graham was 27. I know, I know, that's what they did in these old films in Hollywood. It was just a standard back then, but just, I can't help but notice it when I watch a film like this. And I will say this, this older, a little more haggard Bogart of 1950 does really a great job at conveying that creepy edge to his character. No spoilers, but yeah, he's got a dark side. How dark, you go and find out. And you know, I really appreciated seeing actor Art Smith as Agent Mel, who was a super nice guy who was able to overlook Dixon's more abusive side. I chuckled about his comment he makes in the film of trying to talk Selznick out of doing Gone with the Wind. You know, it's that sort of old 70-year-old reference that I'm starting to understand more, and when I hear it in a film, it makes me smile. I will say this though, the scene where Bogart punches him after he makes a harmless comment was very uncomfortable on a lot of levels and strangely that's one of the main scenes that really stuck with me after watching this film. Because first Mel takes the punch and just sort of deals with it. He's basically resigned to live in an abusive relationship with this friend and that's very uncomfortable. Later, Dixon goes on and, you know, his friend Mel is kind of washing his face and he sort of makes peace with him following the punch and they shake hands. But you know that Dixon is abusive and you know it's going to happen again. And that part really got to me. This film is more than just crime noir. It also does a solid job of exploring the psychology of abuse with someone with a behavioral disorder. So it's done well here, but it can also be a little uncomfortable to watch. Anyhow. Bogart and Graham are both excellent here. This was a fantastic psychological thriller and a crime noir classic. Definitely check this one out.